Hi everyone, Empress Justice here, aka Fabi and Egan. If you'd like to check out daily readings for the 6th of March 2022, you can check it out on Your Justice Tarot. If you'd like to check out my vocals, you can check out Fabi and Egan vocals. Less than I know, it's been a minute since I've done like any vocals yet. Give me time. I've just had it, just gotten over a cough that I've had over the last month or so. And even then, I might not be out of the woods. I'm um, still singing here and there, so don't, don't worry about it. But yeah, I will be uploading stuff soon. Don't worry about it. So, all right. So today was okay. I mean, there was a little bit of fracas early in the morning, but it's calm. As you can hear, everything's calm. There's no noise. It's fine. So what I actually wanted to talk to you about today was revenge, karma, and payback. Those are the things that I wanted to talk to you about today. Now, being a targeted individual, and you guys have seen it online, I've gone through experiences where I've wanted revenge or payback on somebody, but here's the thing about it. The thing is, is the thing that no one tells you is that when someone hurts you, you do get your revenge. You do get your revenge, but nine times out of 10, it's not instant. So if somebody does something to you, you get worse shit back, right? So nine times out of 10, that's what happens, even when you don't realize it. And, you know... It's true, karma does do that, but nine times out of ten when that happens, you're not around to see it. And the reason why you're not around to see it is because you didn't want them to be treated the same way that you were treated. That's not what you wanted. What you wanted was for them to feel the way that you were feeling, which is a different thing entirely. Like, for instance... I could cuss out a gang stalker and call them all the names under the sun. Only for me to get 10 times worse for the smear campaign against me and people doing all this. Now, don't get don't get it twisted. This is weaponized, weaponized retribution. But from a spiritual perspective, that is my karma, because the thing is, I'm not getting back what I have done to other people. I am getting back the way that I have made people feel. It doesn't matter what, whether what they've done to me is right or wrong. I get back what I have made people feel. That is what I get back and that is what they're seeing. Simple things, right? So this is why when somebody hurts you or when somebody causes you trauma, that it is really important to unpack exactly how you actually feel. Because nine times out of 10, the reason why you're upset, it actually surprises you the reasons why you're upset. You, you, you come to find out that it's not the reasons that you thought they were. Do you understand? So the first thing to do, you really have to do is unpack how you feel about shit. Because at the end of the day, how you're actually feeling can be very different for what you're telling other people or what you're even telling yourself. Revenge is one of those things. <laughs> Revenge is... You know, we always get our revenge. Everybody always gets their revenge and they don't even realize it because it's happening. Imagine we're the main characters of our lives, right? And our antagonist comes in doing shit. We do end up getting revenge for everything that they've done to us. It happens off screen though, because that's not what we were looking for. There have been people who tried to get me sectioned who ended up being sectioned themselves. There's one particular person Um, who tried to get me sectioned several times, like on some bullshit. Like cut to a few years later, I'm relatively okay. Yeah, I go through shit with these neighbors right here. But when it comes to mental health, I'm actually doing better than I was doing um, like what, five years ago? A lot better. But the thing is, is that the person who tried to section me they are now drugged up, (laughs) like they're regularly drugged up. The last photo I saw of them was they had makeup on, but that makeup was smeared because, you know, you know, when people are injected, they try to apply makeup. It doesn't, 
it doesn't go on right because their motor skills have been badly affected. So that person got exactly what they tried to do to me, but all of that was off screen because that wasn't what I wanted. I didn't want them to be sectioned. I wanted them to feel how I was feeling and that's what I got to see. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that when you don't realize that, what will happen is that you'll subconsciously bring yourself into situations where you feel like you have the opportunity to get your own back only for it to not work out like that at all. This is the thing that I have the hardest issue with. My trauma has me trying to get revenge on people from two decades ago, even three decades ago. Uh, You know, only for me to be in that situation again, trying to get revenge for that situation, and it, it just doesn't work out. It rarely works out. So I've traumatized myself all over again. And on top of that, I've left a transference of anger from what those people back in the past did to me. So it's it's like it's a really complex thing. Like I've left some I've left trans that's what's called transference of anger, right? So you get abused and then you have trauma carrying it around with you, and then you pass it on to someone else. That's transference of anger. I've done it. I think everybody in the entire planet does that shit. There's somebody that is more violent than them. We call that superior in our society. There's somebody who's more violent than them who has abused them. And then they transfer that anger onto someone else, right? That's what we do. We feel like people who are who we're intimidated by or who we've been abused by, we we get abused by them or we get made to feel like shit by them, but then we transfer it onto somebody that we believe is weaker than ourselves. Everybody does it. I do it. Everybody does it. It's one of the parts of myself that I wish I could fucking change and I hate that part because I feel like it's weak and it's cowardly but this is something that we all do but that is your subconscious trying to rectify mistakes that you have you believe you have made in the past but all it does is leave a trail of pain and further trauma to yourself in your wake This is why as much as I talk about revenge in my videos, because there are times where the abuse gets really heightened and all I can think about is the pain that I'm subjected to, whether that be harassment, whether that be um, electronic torture, all I can think about is the pain that I'm subjected to. And all I can think about is I just want revenge on these bastards as quickly as possible. But when you have enough distance from the pain, you can start to see how futile revenge is, how pointless it is how ridiculous it is everybody gets their karma in one way or the other don't let a damn thing fool you because the way other people made you feel at some point you have returned the favor or somebody has returned the favor right in front of you you just didn't realize that because you don't know how they feel However it is that the person has made you feel, you've returned that favor right in front of you. And at the end of the day, right, what you, you know, what you say you're looking for, all of that is going to happen off screen. All of it is going to happen off screen for the simple reason that um, you, you never wanted them to be treated how they treated you. You wanted to return the feeling that they made you feel. So... You know, so that's what you got in real time. You know, revenge is just so fucking pointless. It's like, it's so pointless because it's just the only thing, the only thing that has to be done is you have to pay attention to how you're feeling and you've got to pay attention to your surroundings. And then from there, you have to find a way to channel everything that you're feeling and experiencing in a positive direction that's what you have to do this revenge shit is just it's petty it's stupid it's low and this is coming from somebody who has gotten her revenge several times it doesn't work
you're still left with the hurt, you're still left with the anger, you're still left with the guilt of what you've done to other people. It doesn't eradicate anything, it doesn't help anything. Does not help. And I discussed earlier BPD, right? The, the addiction to validation. I feel like getting older and getting fatter is probably two of the best things that could have ever happened to me from an emotional perspective, because it's like, as a BPD person, I have this addiction to validation and they're just not being validated, which means, or, which means the only thing I can do is reflect inwards and get better. Like, oh, I swear to God, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because it's only when you're taken out of society and you're rendered invisible that you can see what society has been doing to you. Damn, man. Like, <laughs> and it also makes me realize how much hurting I've been doing. I mean, it's not even just how much people have hurt me, it's how much I've hurt them and how we may never forgive each other for that. And that's fine. I'm kind of going into another tangent now. It's like, I started off talking about getting older and getting fatter and then it came back to revenge again. But the truth of the matter is, is that we all hurt each other. And the truth of the matter is, is that we may never forgive each other for that. It's fine, accept it, you know? But yeah, revenge is petty and pointless and stupid. I mean, if, if you wanna do it, I mean, have at it, but take it from somebody who's gotten her revenge several times. Like, I've gotten my revenge so many times, like I can't even count. Like. And nine times out of 10, I wasn't even looking for it. I just fucking got it. Like it was, <laughs> it was like, I just ended up getting it. It's not what it's cracked up to be because it doesn't heal. It doesn't heal the fact that all that trauma that happened to you, it just backed up everything that you thought about yourself anyway. And that's the part that you're not reconciling. That's the part that people don't reconcile. All the trauma that happened to you the biggest reason why it traumatized you is because it reinforced everything that you thought about yourself anyway. Because the thing about emotions is that they're not moral. They're based, they're utilitarian. Your emotions are utilitarian. They are based on pleasure and pain. And if you're getting a certain amount of pain, then your body starts to, you know, your, the water in your body, it starts to think, well, maybe I deserve it. Because it's not moral. There's no morality. There's no morality in emotions. That's the biggest part of trauma that nobody tells you. The reason why it traumatizes you so badly is because we learn to associate pain with punishment. So if we're being battered over and over and over again, then our emotions are going to tell us that at some point that either we deserve it or we've done something wrong or better yet, we are wrong. That's where trauma comes from. It comes from our emotions not being able to make the distinction between intention, action, and whether or not somebody deserves something. That's a cognitive thought that we've evolved into considering. But our emotions don't know that shit. Pleasure, good, pain, bad, that's all our body knows. So, it, you know, if we are subjected to a certain amount of pain then and we go through trauma then you know at, at deep down we want to die and we want everyone else to die <laughs> we don't care which but that's going on subconsciously that's going on subconsciously but that's the part of trauma that nobody confronts the reason why all those insults leveled at me over the years has hurt me so much is because deep down I thought I deserved it and I thought I, well, sometimes I did, I'm not going to lie, but like, there, <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes I did. In fact, the times where I got insulted, where I absolutely deserved it, it didn't actually scar me as much because it's like, you know, because I could see where I deserved that shit. So, it, you know, it didn't hurt me as much as it could have done, but it's just, 
irrationally, the times where cognitively I know I, I know I didn't deserve to get bullied like that. You know, it's cognitively, there's this fight going on between cognitively knowing like I didn't deserve that, that that wasn't warranted. Um, and then there's the subconscious mind who's even deeper into I deserve this, I deserve this, I deserve this. So every time you go through a trauma and especially a trauma that you didn't warrant, there's like this fucking battle going on between the front and back of your mind there. And it, you know, that in and of itself can be traumatizing on top of what you already went through. So it's, it's, it's a lot, man. It like, it's a lot, like the trauma's a lot. And, you know, again, shame, it depends on who you are as a person. With me, if I get shamed for shit that I knew was wrong to do, then I tend not to feel as badly about it. I, I don't feel traumatized by getting what I deserve or what I feel I deserve. I don't feel traumatized by that. If anything, I feel like it liberates me because I feel like, you know what, I've paid for my wrongdoing. I can get on with my life. That's how it makes me feel. It makes me feel like if I've been punished for something, that I've actually done, not how I've made people feel, but what I've actually done. If I've been sufficiently paid, you know, punished enough for it, it actually makes me feel better about myself. Whereas there are so many instances where I've been abused and I didn't deserve it. And then there's this battle going on between the conscious part of my mind that knows this is bullshit, the super ego, and then the id that doesn't know what's going on. And all they're thinking is, well, if I'm going through all this, I must deserve it. So imagine being a young child or an elderly person going through this shit. Then imagine being a woman or being female and going through this shit. Imagine being not straight and going through this shit. Imagine being black and going through this shit every day. Imagine being a targeted individual and going through this shit every day. What do you think that does to a person? And if it doesn't do what you think it does to a person, then think about the psychological maze that they have to go through just to be able to fucking get up every day and function. All of that is what goes on every single time you go through a trauma, doesn't matter how small it is. So of course, in the midst of that, why wouldn't you want revenge? Every time you go through a trauma and especially an undeserved one, your conscious mind and your id start to separate. It gets to a point now where you're desperately trying to grasp who you are or who, you know, what, what your identity is in this life. That's what trauma does to you. So why wouldn't you want revenge for that? Why wouldn't you want payback for that? That's only natural. It's only natural. It's only natural to want revenge for that. But take it from somebody who's had it. It's not gonna make you happy because that was never the issue. The issue was in your own mind and that's not to blame you for what how other people treat you how other people treat you is their responsibility just like how you feel emotionally is not really your responsibility at all you're responding to something that was done to you but how you meet that in action is your responsibility but yeah you're traumatized and, you know, revenge, it seems nice when you go through it, but then when you really sit down and unpack all the ways in which we all hurt each other, it just makes you realize it's just fucking ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. It doesn't help. It doesn't make anybody happy. It just creates more fucking a trail of pain that you have to, like, 
Hmm. Ah. Oh, that's ridiculous. But anyway, I've got to go. I've got to do these readings. I've got to make some tea, chillax, you know, look at what the market's doing because God damn, man, this war has just... <laughs> Whew, this war has just fucked everybody up. I mean, damn. Russia are getting banned from everything. And I don't I don't know where they think this pantomime is going because the thing is like the amount of money that Russia has tied up in other countries. And I got it wrong before. I said that um Russia has a petrol line, but that's not true. They have a gas line. 70% of our gas, not our petrol, comes from Russia. So if Britain really want to act up, all they have, all the Russia, have, all the Russians have to do is turn that tap off, and boom, we're cold. <laughs> so boy, their markets ain't no joke. This this invasion, Ukrainian invasion, ain't no joke. There's so many lies being told, and there's so much like narcissistic abuse, bullshit being done not only to Russians, but just to the public in general, like it's literally turned into pantomime now, but I mean, shit, <laughs> you know. But anyway, I gotta go. You guys take care of yourselves, I love you. Take care, my fellow TIs, peace and blessings. Will we get through this war? I don't think so, but we'll see. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.